Okay, my name is uh, Eirik Skandrit. I'm, uh, I've been lecturing in sociology for, uh, at Queen Margaret for about eight years. Um, before that I worked in sort of adult education in the voluntary sector mostly. Um, the courses I teach here at the moment, uh, there's four courses. Uh, first year course I teach is called Studying Society, the Sociological Imagination. And that's really aimed at uh, first year, some of whom have done a bit of sociology before, some of whom have not, but really uh, to encourage uh, a kind of excitement in trying to understand what, how society works and, and, and what patterns there might be and what uh, uh, a lot of current affairs, things that we see in the newspapers and so on. What do sociologists uh, uh, do to try and make sense of all that? So that's, that's the first year, first year course and that's taught really to um, students of sociology and of psychology so that they get a, a sense of that. I teach a second year course which is called Social Movements and Political Change um, and that really draws on my interest in, in uh, social movements, particularly environmental movements but other, other social movements as well and really looks at how um, social and political change happens uh, and the role that uh, citizens uh, through collective organising uh, play, how they, what role they play in, in making that change happen. So um, we can't sometimes think that the way that things are at the moment has been kind of handed down by some kind of policy, but policy is only made by the demands of uh, people, the demands of organisations, trade unions, the women's movement and so on. Women's movement is a good example because um, a lot of people know about the suffragettes and, and so on from the early part of the 20th century. But the, the rights that women have today are only there because women have organised and campaigned and, and, and lobbied and changed attitudes and changed laws and so on. So we look at what so sociology can contribute to understanding how these social movements change society uh, and also um, you know, invite students to uh, participate and, and to, to get involved in, in so, uh, social movement organisations if they feel strongly about things. So that, that's two courses. The third course I teach is at uh, level four. That's called Gender Justice, Masculinities and Violence. And it's a, an unusual course in that it's taught jointly between Queen Margaret University and Scottish Women's Aid. Um, uh, some staff from Women's Aid have worked with me uh, on this, this course. Um, and the students are the sociology students, but also we open the course up to uh, people from uh, who are working for women's aid organizations or social workers or, or campaigners in the women's movement, so who might want to update their sort of theoretical knowledge. So the course is, is completely integrated between theory and practice or theory and policy or whatever. So the, the, the value of trying to understand um, what it is that causes violence against women in di different forms, domestic violence, rape, sexual assault, um, etc. What social patterns do we understand that, that, that make it more or less uh, likely that these kind of violations happen? How is that linked to the way that um, men and women understand their own genders and that, how that's constructed in society? So that's, that's the fourth year course I teach. I also teach a master's course uh, which is called Social Justice um, and that is looking at social justice both from a sociological point of view, how various movements have made claims for, uh, for justice, justice for women, justice for, for uh, workers or whatever, um, but also from a philosophical point of view, how philosophers have, have tried to understand what would social justice look like if we, if we could could create it in our society. So from both these perspectives we try and uh, deepen our understanding uh, of social justice um, and then we look at various kind of ways in which social justice has tried to be implemented through um, uh, radical education, through social policy, uh, through non-violence um, uh, and so on. Um, and also some case studies. And the case studies we try and draw on the experiences of the of the postgraduate students themselves. Some of whom have come from overseas. Some of whom have been uh, involved in working in some kind of health related uh, uh, work or something. And and so there are social justice questions that come up for them uh, the whole time. So we try and draw on that. 
So that's, that's the teaching I do. Um, my research interest is primarily in social movements um, and particularly the environmental justice movements, which, by which I mean um, people who have been directly confronted with uh, the impact of pollution or environmental degradation, how they organise, how they um, make claims on society, make claims on economic decision making, and also how people learn in that process, because often when uh, people are faced with pollution, they, they, they don't necessarily have the knowledge of how to campaign, what the pollution is about or whatever, but they quite often learn quite rapidly uh, what, the, what they're doing. And so I'm very interested in that process, how people learn uh, the skills and the knowledge required in order to stand up for their own dignity and their own rights and so on. So, for example, for a number of years I have been working with the survivors of the Bhopal gas disaster that happened in 1984 and ever since then there have, some of the survivors have been campaigning for justice, for compensation, for adequate health care, for economic rehabilitation, for environmental rehabilitation of the site of the factory that, that uh, exploded. It's still there, it's still contaminated. And so the survivors' movement has been campaigning over that nearly 30 years. Um, many of the people who are campaigning are not literate, they're, they're from very poor backgrounds, um, but they have succeeded in, in making quite an impact on, on the world in, in terms of uh, making demands, making their, their, uh, making their demands known to people across the world. Sociology is, is well, the study of society, so um, uh, if you are at all interested uh, uh, in how society works, how current affairs come to be, how, how they are, uh, what's, what's going on behind it. Um, that, I think probably most of us have some kind of interest in, in that. People read papers, they, 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 they sort of watch what's going on. And quite often the kind of discussions that you overhear on the bus or in the pub or whatever are to do with people's opinions about why why things are happening the way that they are, you know, what's happening in in, uh, in, in Syria at the moment, the kind of civil war that's going on, or what's happening uh, at home with um, uh, scandals about uh, um, uh, child abuse and so on. What, how do these things come to be? Now, you might have a kind of common sense uh, uh, response to that, which is based on your own experience, but the sociologists look at some of the social patterns behind these things.